Um, Mike Day, I was in the SEAL teams for 21 years. Um, I got out of the Navy in 2010, and I was a, a wounded warrior advocate for about seven years. I moved into teaching military free fall, uh, and currently right now I teach uh, uh, New York SWAT, uh, police, uh, active shooter tactics, uh, how to deal with active shooter, and I also uh, teach the SEAL teams urban warfare and CQC tactics. In, in the SEAL teams, everybody has like a specific job. I was more of an engineering, uh, air operations type guy, but I mean, you have so many different jobs. Uh, you know, everybody shoots, everybody's a breacher, everybody's a calm guy. Uh, at the end of 21 years in the Navy, I was a senior chief, uh, E8. But my last deployment, I was the platoon chief. April 2007, uh, my last operation in Iraq on my, on my last deployment. Uh, we were tasked with going after an Al-Qaeda cell that had shot down four helicopters. Uh, we did a helicopter insert in, did about a four kilometer patrol into the target. Um, got some overhead notification uh, from assets that we had overhead that uh, there was people in the area that knew we were there. Uh, we, we slimmed down the, uh, the target package and we were supposed to hit four houses that night, decided to just hit the one. Uh, we get up to the house. Uh, the breach team goes up and they open up one of the doors and it doesn't have access to the rest of the house. I'm on another door. Uh, I turn and kick that door, I open up into a small foyer. Uh, two doors in there, we stack and split the, split the train to go into both these rooms, it's simultaneous room entries. And in my room there was four guys. Uh, two of them had AK-47s, one had an M4, one had a pistol. And they just beat me to the trigger. Uh, they opened up on me. I lost my rifle as I was uh, traveling down the left wall. I transitioned to my pistol and I eliminated the guy down the left wall, landed right next to him and started shooting around the room. Uh, the, uh, the second guy that I eliminated had pulled a pin on a grenade and he was trying to run out in the hallway to pull up the guys in the hallway. Uh, I shot him, he dropped the grenade, it blew up and knocked me out. Um, so a couple things that were going on behind me, uh, as the train goes into the room, we, we enter a room as fast as we can. So we put four plus people into a room as fast as we can. So as soon as the door opens up, everybody's going in. Uh, I was number one, my number two guy got shot in the chest. My number three guy got killed in the doorway. And uh, a seal named Clark Schweller uh, was shot in the back of the neck uh, from around. Uh, that passed through two doorways. Um, so that was everything that was going on behind me. Um, when I was unconscious on the ground from the grenade blast, uh, a couple guys tried to get back in the room. There were still two guys with AK-47s uh, that were just throwing rounds out through the doorway. So they couldn't get in there. They asked for status in the house. I was unconscious. They left the house and when they were leaving the house, I woke up and saw the two guys across the room shooting over top of me at the guys leaving. I re-engaged them um, with my pistol, uh, run a mag dry, do a mag change. They realize I'm shooting at them, and they re-engage me. And then they hit the foot of the magazine and literally blows the hand grips off the pistol, causes the malfunction, and I clear that malfunction and wind up killing those two dudes that, with that pistol that had been shot with an AK. Yeah, I realize I'm shot. I mean, when this whole thing happened, uh, I had to ask myself if I was getting shot. You know, I've never been shot before, and, and it was actually a question. You know, everything slowed down. I was in like a matrix. I saw the spin of the bullets. I saw vapor trails. I can tell you, for every bullet impacted, uh, and it was pretty surreal. I mean, I don't even know if I'm making this up, <laughs> but I've done so many transition drills that I didn't tell myself to transition. I didn't tell myself to grab my pistol. Yeah, I mean, that's why we train the way we did. Repetition builds muscle memory. Uh, when you're in high stress situations, sometimes you just don't think. And it has to become auto automatic. Everything that I did in that room wasn't so much a conscious thought process. It was, uh, it was muscle memory. And that's why we train the way we do. Anybody that trains for anything has to train to, to the highest stress level they can. Uh, so that when the stress levels are that high, you don't really have to think. 
all those thousands of times that I did transition drills going from my rifle to my pistol, uh, it was completely automatic. I didn't have to look at it. I had two points of retention on that thing. Uh, I didn't. I didn't have to look at it to get it to get it uh, out of the holster. It was just just the years and years of repetitive repetitive training, and it just builds that muscle memory to the point where I mean that's that's all it is. It's muscle memory. You're not you're literally not using your brain because it's already ingrained.